Adventure Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Here with both Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. We're good, thank you, Lee. Thanks for I like you leaned into the microphone to give a smooth answer there, Joe. I appreciate that. I am, as you guys know, I've just literally walked back in from the gym, hit the laptop, ready to go. So I might be slightly hyperactive in my post-gym buzz, so I apologise now. Everyone out there, we thank you for listening, downloading, watching, social media at listen to I listen T O I N. Throw us a follow. We always follow back. We appreciate all the interaction. Of course, Joe on TikTok, J Noya underscore inspiration nation um journey to ten thousand. and as people are doing now on tiktok you can join us live thank you in there people throwing out likes we appreciate all of that manchester united on there still liking appreciate it a lot any questions just chuck them in there right after a blistering episode last week where i educated you guys on the art of mindfulness anyone who's not heard that go back in the archive and listen to it who is up for conversation this week who is holding the talking stick i think it's me isn't it is it me joe has, it's joe has me. got his stick in his hands what are we going to talk about right we're going to talk about the power of silence actually oh good it's, it's a quiet one for us then lee nice <laughs> it is, it is, it's a good one i feel like that shut down was, my initial was, buzz in one go <laughs> i was going to do i was going to do the personality thing but i think we haven't all looked at our personality things that we were doing oh, i've so. not done it sorry yeah, that's my worry. bad so we can do that another time. We can do that another time. But yeah, we can do that because I think it'd be quite good to examine the personality types again through the different one, through the different one. But anyway, um, so the so I'm following Lee's little tack on this. I'm just going to go through the power of science. I've got five ways of being of how being silent can be powerful. So I've got some five things. But what I want to do is I want to throw it over to you guys about the power of silence and on what your initial thoughts about how we can be silent and how powerful that can be. Have you got any initial thoughts on it? That was quite powerful, wasn't it? Yeah, see, we look at that, right? Yeah, there we go. Way. No, <laughs> I, was not going to be the, I was not going to be the first to break either. That's one of the powers. I could just see of, of listener retention just falling through the floor in the silence. <laughs> yeah, it's not so um, good for a podcast, is it? <laughs> um, no, is the short answer. Uh, other than the obvious, taking time to pause and be silent and be in the moment gives you a time to reflect on things properly, which is stuff that we've spoken about loads. But other than that, no. Okay. I think there's, like you said, Joe, there's one bit, and it's touching what Ryan said there, is the pause, reflect, digest. It gives space for other people to have the floor as well. And sometimes it's, it's even a good tool for drawing stuff out of people sometimes. Sometimes just giving them that space and not, I think we reference this in older shows, not having to feel the silence, actually draw stuff out from other people and get them to think about further about what they're saying or elaborate or expand on something. And I think it can be a really useful, constructive tool in that way. I think there's also, you know, when someone's expecting a fight, it might be personal, might be professional, might be social, but someone's there's confrontation building and actually sometimes just withdrawing and not responding to the confrontation is a more powerful response and responding to it, you know, especially if, if someone goes too far or something like that, actually the best way to get that message across sometimes is just to withdraw and not engage rather than to escalate and escalate and often lose sight of what you're even talking about. Yeah, definitely. That's I what think. jumps to my brain immediately. Yeah. Well, I have got five. It's going to leave. Oh, look five at this. You ways. are following my lead. <laughs> I'm copying Lee here. So um, this is, is courtesy of uh website um called leadingpeoplewrite.com so a uh, number one is being silent in front of a group so it's about pattern in, pattern interruption about leaving pauses and i think we've talked about this before where we've talked about the three story arc where you just sort of bring people up bring people down but to stop when you're a, a, a crucial point now with my training when i'm delivering you know quite a bit of information is to stop to let people as ryan you said to reflect and take it in so and actually they say with a bigger group of people is actually more powerful the silence is more powerful when you the more people you've got in a room the silence is even more powerful so that's number one have you got any thoughts about that not yet no okay let me go on to number two number two is team meetings so the next one was um if there's a performance issue frame it put it on the table and then let the team solve it essentially frame the problem and let them solve it so and then using the power of coaching questions to help them solve it so encourages accountability that's number two 
Any thoughts I on like that? that. Have you guys ever do? Have you ever, ever done that? I, no, I like or that. Or have jumped the, in to solve it? Sorry. I think both. I think I've probably done both. I think there has been situations where it is to jump to solve it, which I'm not saying that that's, that's bad. Sometimes that's what people need. Um, but I agree with you, Joe, actually, the leaving the problem out there and letting people find their way to it, people are more invested in that solution because they're a part of it rather than it's just being said to them in that space for people to think, an experiment and maybe go down a path and come back and go down another path and go on that journey to get to the solution, I think definitely can be a, a useful tool. Well, I remember you had a little project going at one of your places, didn't you? It was the X project. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what the project was, but it was X. That's your, that's your little baby in it, Lee. That is. It's, it's still, yeah, it's it's still, still going. going. Still yeah. going. That was, how really Lee, that was how Lee and I met was, was through that project. So <clears> that, that in itself was, I think, an example of that, right? So... I'm sure that's that's what that was built on. So, yeah, I like that. I myself, yeah, I mean, have I done that before? Yeah, I've not led teams for a while now. I'm more in, in coaching, but in, in coaching, you still, you just basically let people deal with the issue and just ask questions. So that's what comes to number three. So number three is one-to-ones, leave spaces for people to respond. So going back to you, Ryan, you know, time to reflection. You know, if someone's got a challenge or whatever, maybe it's performance, maybe it's behavior or whatever it is, bringing it, bringing it factually to their attention and then, you know, ask them what they want to do about it. This is particularly useful when I work for the Samaritans and they taught you the power of silence, you know, letting people work through their feelings or work through the problem so they can actually articulate and start to come up with solutions themselves. Really, put, really, really powerful. But have you guys ever done that in one-to-ones and stuff? I know when I first did one-to-ones back in the day when I was a very new leader, I did not do that. <laughs> I talked for most of it. And I'll probably say the ratio is me 70% talking, them 30%, where it should be you 20 and them sort of 80. Um, I so think yeah, for I anyone, anyone who's ever listened to the podcast would be shocked, Joe, that that was your initial ratio. Absolutely. That shocked. it was as low as 70%. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I had quite a good manager before I stepped into leadership and he uh, was quite, he didn't like people knowing much about his personal life. So it was very hard for him to lead any of those conversations. So we would have conversations. We would, we would have a good rapport, but where he didn't let you too far into his into his personal life or things outside of work so much, it was very easy to stay on a path of talking about or of me leading those conversations in a one to one and things like that. So I think as a result of that and knowing how successful they were for me, maybe I've not necessarily been as much of a closed book as what <clears throat> he was, but definitely the technique of letting them talk at you and then just picking out the bones of picking out the meat from the bones of, of what they've said to kind of get a valuable conversation is something that, that I learned pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's really good. But when you pick out the bones as well, you're sort of sort of paraphrasing back that you've listened as well, which I think is a really, really important point. You know, you're 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 paraphrasing about what, what they've said, which is great. Um so I've got four and five. Four and five are actually my favourite. So number four is when you know the answer, don't give the answer. Essentially just leave the leave it on the table and coach it through with questions. Um, and I love that because that's actually a real great coaching technique. So have you ever, I, I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but I know when I have the answer, I really have to fight to not, even when I'm coaching, I, I have to really like fight that will not to give the answer. But I always say it's the nuclear bomb of coaching to give the answer or to give an answer or give a solution. But do you I think that's, that? um, like you said, Joe, that ties in with some of the techniques we've talked about where, especially where you know what, where you need to get to. Again, I've I've used this, technique myself where you know where you know you know the outcome is you want people to be bought into this idea by the time they leave the room and actually the whole purpose is to you nudge and steer a conversation in that direction but without ever being explicit or or specify about it so you let you know, you kind of guide people on that journey if you like and it's what is as easy you know it's easy thing but why is the most powerful thing and i in work and i think in my personal life sometimes i drive people crazy where they'll ask me what i think about something and my response is well what do you think about that mm. because actually i don't and i've got a view but i don't necessarily want to just put give, that out there give or, them your view yeah or i might have a view that's based on this much of knowledge and actually by kind of getting them to talk through it it gives it lets me make sure i've got the right view before i say something back or you know where they're looking for advice again i always think it's a lot better to to get people to realize the answer than just tell them the answer. And that's not to say I do it hundred percent of the time, but I, I do know that on the flip side, you know, 
why do you always answer a question with a question is not a phrase that I'm unfamiliar with, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a really powerful one as well, because, you know, you said about you might have this thing in your head, but actually a lot of the time you're a bit, get, I get surprised by what people come back with. And actually it changes Absolutely. the course of the solution, which is fabulous. And, and I think that's a big part of it is you yeah. don't you don't always know the full picture or what people are thinking of what their intentions are and what their reasons were. And you need you need that. In fact, don't even need that context because they lead themselves to the answer. It doesn't really then matter what you think, does it? Yeah, it's it's a really it's, it's so powerful. Um, I really do love that one. And number five, when people voice problems, just resist solving the problem. Just listen and interject with questions. And then again, it's very similar sort of a coaching approach. So, if people have problems, you know, it's then about how can you help them solve the problem without you actually telling them. And you may have a solution, but actually withholding that again. Um, again, it's not solving people's problems, right? Getting them to solve them. So that's number five. So, so you five. Can I give um, you a story on number five, Joe? Sorry, yeah, I know yeah, I'm, go, I'm, go, now, go. I'm now not doing the silence, but something just popped in my head. So one of my great bits of life, I always tell people that most of my great advice in life, as in things I've taken on myself and apart to people, mostly come from cartoons and TV shows. There's one I really like, which comes from Future Armour, which is when you've done something right, people don't know you've done anything at all. That's not what this is, but I love that. And that comes, that comes from Future Armour. It's from a cartoon, but I think it is great advice. But there's another one which is for relationships, as in romantic ones, or with friendships. And I, I bear this a lot, especially when people are soundboarding or talking or, you know, you haven't seen someone for a while and they're, maybe they're going through a hard time and they want to offload it. Um, and it was a scene. from, do you remember Malcolm in the Middle? I've heard of it, but I Ryan? don't remember watching it. It, it was probably two or three years before my time, but it was always on after the, it was always on before The Simpsons on Sky One on a Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should that, definitely, that's, the bit, that's the bit I remember. You should go back and watch it because it's brilliant. And what made um, Brian Cranston so Breaking Bad is is one of the lead characters in it. It's like an ensemble cast, and it's he's like his first big TV role, and he's brilliant. And I think once you see other stuff he's done, and you go back and look at it, you just realise how brilliant of an actor he is. But it's it's great. It's comedy, chaotic family reminds me a lot of my life growing up. I identified with it a lot, and uh, so probably speaks more in that way. But anyway, the the husband in it who is brian cranston i can't remember what the situation is but he ends up all of it's quite farcical in a way but he ends up that he's getting his nails done in a nail salon and i think him and mrs malcolm in the middle had had a falling out in a big fight and he's like well i don't you know she tells me this is an issue i tell her how she should fix it and she's just she's not happy with me and the women in the salon are part of um, part the wisdom from their side of the relationship and say i said salon really weird didn't you know? i the people in the salon and part of their wisdom and say that she doesn't want the problem solved. She just wants you to listen and empathize and understand she's got a problem. And he's like, Oh, and then there's a thing later on where she's talking about an issue and that's what he does. And she's like, Oh, I love you for listening. Thank you. And that, that stuck with me. And I do, I see that a lot where people soundboard and again, relationship, friends, personal life, work life, Sometimes people are reaching out for a solution and sometimes people just want to get something off the chest and validate that it's okay to be annoyed about that thing, get that validation, and then they move on and solve their problem. And I don't always get that balance right, but I see that quite a lot where sometimes people just want an ear. They don't want a solution. They're not ready for the solution yet. But that Malcolm in the Middle, that bit of great advice comes from. And I think that that ties exactly with what you said there on number five, I think, Jay. Yeah, I, yeah and you're absolutely right, you know. You know, family members come up to you and they ask, you know, they don't want you to solve it, just want to sound, just want to sound, just want to just like get it out. There is and one I know on the flip thing. side, sometimes I'm at that sounding off bit and people give me a solution. I'm thinking, I don't want the effing yeah, solution you have right to, now. You have to almost like tell them, <laughs> wouldn't you? you? Yeah, and the last thing actually was, it's actually interesting, so going, I'm going to give um, credit to leadingpeoplewrite.com. This is where you find it. If you want to find them, they're there. But also when not to use silence. And I thought this is quite, it is somewhat of like leaving, leaving, leaving on a negative, which I don't tend to do, but I think it's really powerful and we really should be thinking about it. It's when you're giving people the cold shoulder, it's like a passive aggressive move where, you know, you, you're annoyed with someone, you just don't, don't talk to them, you just withdraw. Um, you could be a team leader and you hold a bit of power because you don't get back to your team member or whatever, just because you want to hold a bit of power. I think that again is just making sure we use silence in the right way and not the wrong way as a weapon. So I think it's a really, really strong thing where, you know, where that annoyance is that we, we don't hold have silence as a weapon, um, which I think is really powerful. So again, it doesn't actually say weapon in the article, but 
I think it really is. It's like a passive Yeah, yeah, that's move. a good analogy on it, Joe, I think. And can I just say, in TikTok, someone shouted out, that some mic, <laughs> talking about your microphone, oh, Joe, which I often yeah, like I to refer when I can. So look at yeah, that. Thanks, Mark. Famous... <laughs> that some mic. <laughs> I presume, I presume it does actually how well look really it... big in the TikTok the video. Screen <laughs> and the, the, the girth and the angle of the microphone is probably what's exciting <laughs> people. <laughs> I don't know. Is this is this falling into a little bit of disarray this this episode? A little bit. Like... We've, well, no. So I think this has been fantastic, and then me with my post gym hype is taking it off the rails. So yeah, we get back on it again. But anyway, I suppose just the last thing before we 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 sort of move off, I think, is what's the big takeaways for you guys? What are the big takeaways then as a result of this conversation today? I think just to be very conscious of making the use of that. You know, don't don't always throw the answer out. When someone says something, maybe a, a pause afterwards is, is good. Just to, to reinforce that in my kind of armory of tools that I use, there's been a good refresher on that, Joe. Because I do, I do think for me naturally that can fall down the list sometimes. So it's good just to put it back in there. I think um, <clears throat> similarly to Lee, I think that's kind of semi what he started to touch on there. But you can also be too silent sometimes. And I think um, there's a right time. To, to play that in a wrong time sometimes yeah. as Lee kind of touched on earlier we would just want to just want to have you listen and some people want a solution so something that I like to try and do when somebody comes to me with these things and I'll be honest it's not actually that often and maybe that's something for me to work on but I, when they say to me look I want to rant to you my response to that is that's fine but do you want a solution or do you not want a solution at the end of it and then that sets me up to know what kind of person I should be as a result of them telling me that Sometimes, and more often than not, um, I'll get the, well, I don't want a solution, but I'd like your input. So it's a bit of a mixture of both, which sometimes can be a bit difficult because you give them your um, give them your honest advice and that's where you have to learn another skill that people will not always take your advice for better or worse. Um, and that can sometimes be a bit tough. If you know the outcome to something is going to be X, you tell somebody X, and they decide to do Y. It's very hard to sometimes not go, well... In your even in your own head, I kind of told you that happened. Um, but I think being a, um, I think having addressing what they want from the conversation is a good way of understanding what involvement you need to put into it. Very long winded takeaway, but that's how I would. No, no, I, I think it's really powerful because you're you're you know you're actually saying to them, you know, you want you to solve your own problem. I think it's really powerful. Um, so no, it's not long winded. It's actually great. Um, and people don't like being told what to do. You just evidenced it there, right? You can't change people. People got to change themselves. And actually, the the, the famous yeah. Jim Rohn talks about that. You cannot change people. People have to want to change themselves. And that's the thing we'll find. You know, people. And the big takeaway for me is, is that you can't tell people what to do. They've got, yeah. to, you know, you've got to leave that science so they can find the solution. That's why. That's why I love coaching, and that's why I love. I love you know training it out. I love getting involved in session because it trains me to continue to be silent and to actually stop talking and to let someone solutionize themselves and so that's what i love um and, and it's amazing uh, the results are just absolutely astounding when you do that and too many times you know we try and jump in with solutions when it's absolutely not warranted i think the more we can allow that i think the more people will self-discover and learn a lot better and they will change themselves for the better um so that's my takeaway but yeah thanks guys i appreciate you uh, listening to those five they were great i love that i like our little rhythm of top fives there maybe ryan will have a good five for us next week as well i have to take like it away i have to take <laughs> it away i love the five thing i don't know it's something about the five thing that's sort of quite good i don't know if there's a, a thing about five but i quite like it's just five it's not Look that, that many. It's just five at the screen for those watching on youtube love that right yeah. so speaking of stop talking shut up joe inspirationnation.org head over there for everything to do with the podcast archive of everything we've got in there um youtube and audio sign up for joe's newsletter coaching service and of course the inspiration nation store where you can get t-shirts hoodies mugs etc 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 all blazoned with the wonderful inspiration nation logo um, follow us on social media at listen to and listen t-o-i-n getting quite a good number of new followers on there every single week at the moment so we appreciate that if you're not already following do so and you can interact with us and the most interactive way to interact with us if i can say interact again is to join joe on tiktok jay Noyer underscore inspiration nation he is on there regularly we live stream as we're doing a podcast which we are doing right now well, today is wednesday isn't it i like to say tuesdays we aim for tuesday around about six o'clock but it varies depending on 
whatever's going on at the time. But Joey's on there very regularly. A lot of regulars from the week join us on the podcast and vice versa. And we genuinely appreciate all of that. Uh, thanks, there Luke. You go. That's my shilling for the week. Wonderful. Joe, that was a great topic. I really enjoyed that. Put some good thoughts back into my brain. The power of silence. Yep. There we go. Um, and of course, we'll be back again next week. And I think all that's left for me to do is count us down. Say three to one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. Catch you, Catch you guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.